The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to the Oh Gladsome Light Podcast. This program contains preaching and teaching from an Orthodox Christian perspective to help you in your walk with Jesus Christ and to be victorious in Him. Well, welcome to the show. It's Oh Gladsome Light. It's noon, it's Monday, and I'm here at W4CY Radio in sunny South Florida, Wellington. So, let me give you some... Uh, contact information before we get into the show topic which is cremation versus burial that is the show topic today on all glad some light cremation versus burial and call me live 561-623-9429 561-623-9429 or you can skype in w4cy radio is your skype address or you can go on to the w4cy.com website and get in the chat room. Also, we're doing a simultaneous broadcast on K4HD in Hollywood, California, and W4VET. So today's topic on the show is cremation versus burial. So I want to give first a shout-out to uh, Father Stephen in Venice, Florida. He is a pastor of the Holy Spirit Orthodox Church in Venice, and I saw a posting on his uh, Facebook page talking about this very topic, cremation versus burial. And it, and right away, the Lord just moved me on doing a show on this uh, topic. So I'm going to jump right on in. I'm going to do a little reading and then uh, some comment and share some personal testimony about this very subject of cremation versus burial. Now, everything I talk about comes from an Orthodox tradition. Okay, Eastern Orthodox tradition. So, in ancient times, pagans always either burned the bodies of their dead or left them for the birds to consume, whereas the Jews and the Christians placed their dead in tombs or in the earth awaiting bodily resurrection. It's interesting uh, that talks about the Jews and the Christians because resurrection is not a strange subject to the Jewish people because it is in the Old Testament. You can go search that out. Just go into your concordance and look up the word resurrection, and you'll find some Old Testament you know, addresses there. For Christians, the belief that the body was the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to listen fast as I go through this because there's a lot of ground to cover today. So the, the, uh, the Christians believe that the body was the temple of the Holy Spirit and therefore sacred made the burning of the body unacceptable. Bodies of our dead always were to be treated with great reverence. From the earliest of times, the bodies of the martyrs and saints were buried in catacombs, like in Rome. Their tombs were used as altars for the celebration of the Eucharistic offering, catacombs, catacombs often being the only safe place for believers to worship without threat of arrest. Now, as I talked about last week, you know, uh, you know, they thought they were cannibals because they were eating the body and blood of Christ. Uh, you know, so that was wrong. That's why they hid in, in the catacombs. But it's interesting that that practice in the first century is going on today in the Orthodox Church because there's a there's a holy cloth on the altar called the Antimension that has a relic in it from a saint. So every time we have a divine liturgy, we are actually duplicating what's happened in the first century when the, when the people had uh, ser divine services over the tombs of the saints. The role cemeteries play in our own spiritual lives, for they are clear reminders of our own mortality. You just go to a cemetery and visit uh, a burial plot of a loved one, okay? And you'll see the birthday and the death day. But you know that there's some comfort knowing that, the, that you know, we know that the body 
is in the ground, but the soul is separated from the body, which is an all-natural process, because in the beginning with Adam and Eve, that they were supposed to live forever, but because of bad choices, the soul, now, that's when God says, you will die. When you break this commandment, you will die, and it happened. Seeing where one eventually will be laid to rest is a good way to remember one's own eventual death, okay? We are temporary. We are not here forever, okay? We're looking for the new Jerusalem. We're looking for uh, a time of eternity forever with Christ, our King. Okay, so that's what, uh, that's what uh, you know, I, I remembered as a kid, visiting cemeteries, always going to the graves, bringing flowers and all that stuff, you know. And I really didn't understand it when I was a kid. But, but as I get older, you, you'll get, let's say, more wisdom about what goes on. And even the word cemetery means dormitory. If you look up the, the actual definition of a cemetery, it is a dormitory, a place of sleeping. The Orthodox Church forbids the cremated remains of anyone to be brought into the temple for services or any other reason the funeral service over cremated remains is strictly forbidden in the Orthodox tradition. The practice is seen as a denial of the bodily resurrection, not because God can't raise the dead from ashes, but because the practice does not reflect the church's teaching that the body of a believer housed the Holy Spirit. It is also ignoring the fact that believers receive in their lifetime the very body and blood of Christ, and the body is therefore made holy in preparation for that day when we shall be united in both body and soul to live with God forever. So that's our that's our future. That's our you know what we seek with our hope. You know, for those who would say that cremation is more ecologically sound, I would point out that the per particles dispersed in the atmosphere are by no means good for the environment so you know you're talking about you know you know everybody's environment conscious today but by being cremated you're actually uh, putting into the air toxins okay, and I get more into this how the cremation process works a new way of burial is called the green burial. Now, we hear a lot of green stuff going on in our, you know, in our world. Green this, green that. But yeah, I tell you what, the Jews and the Orthodox have always had green burials. And I'll explain a little bit more in the show as, as I develop this thought. But a green burial require a simple pine coffin with no metal nails or glue, but only using wooden pegs in a natural materials, okay? The body is not embalmed in keeping with the orthodox tradition, so nothing goes into the earth that is not natural. This is one of the most inexpensive ways of internment and is in keeping with the canons of the orthodox church. Okay. Now, even if you go on the website, you can find Orthodox cemeteries where the Orthodox the Christians are can be buried. Okay. And I, I remember when I was a kid, I was I would went to my dad's funeral. He died when I was very young, and it was an embalming process and the casket and all that, and uh, a lot of money putting him into a vault and then capping the vault, and then you know covering with earth. <clears throat> It almost reminded me of the Egyptians, what they did with their dead, uh, you know, their kings and their princes and queens and all that. Uh, they would, uh, they would uh, make them try to last forever because they would go to the afterlife, you know. And so, you know, these archaeologists, they, they'll go into these tombs and they'll find, they'll find these uh, embalmed uh, uh, people. And some of them look like they're pretty fresh even though they've been in the ground for over 2,000 years. It's quite amazing. Now, let me talk about cremation here for a moment. You've heard ashes, ashes, and dust to dust. It's a common phrase we hear associated with funeral practices. This first appeared in the Church of England's Book of Common Prayer in 1549. The phrase dust to dust has some biblical origin from Genesis 3.19. If you look at that scripture, that's when God said that you, may, you came from the earth and you're going to go back into the earth. So you came from dust and you're going to be dust. Okay. 
And also, if you look in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3.20, the words ashes to ashes do not appear anywhere in the Bible. The scriptures never instruct people to burn dead bodies, turning them into ashes. It's not in the scriptures. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my experience with cremation. My brother passed away. In fact, he passed away on my birthday in 2012. And he was cremated, to my dismay. And I found out that Medicaid would not pay for a burial just the cremation so it seemed like the federal government got in got into it and uh you know i thought we had separation of church and state <laughs> but he was on medicaid and they paid for the cremation but they wouldn't pay for a funeral and i was at the time no money no money to do that my mom had already you know burned up the uh, life insurance and and so we were caught in the situation and i was very sad and of this process because you know my my brother always wanted to be buried next to his dad in Fairview Cemetery in Mishawaka Indiana so I went and interesting when I went to this memorial service all there was was a box a small box on the table and pictures and that was strange to me because uh, there's always you know the, the traditional funerals or there's a viewing and all that you know uh, as I I ex I'll explain a little later what happens in the Orthodox and how, yeah, I, I tell you what, the Orthodox burial is very similar to a Jewish burial, and I'm going to develop that here in a moment, because, you know, because my mom and dad had a burial, I can actually visit their graves this date, you know. Even my dad's brother, who served in World War II, he was killed in action in, in France. And I went on the Internet and typed his name and actually found his marker cross in France where he's buried and, and know exactly the plot number where my Uncle Clarence is buried in France. So if I ever go to France, that's one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find his location, in, you know, his grave. Now I'm going to give you a little history of cremation, what happens. Cremation comes from the Latin word cremare, meaning to burn. Some historical reasons for cremating the dead were, here's a list, to cope with the fear of the dead, to enable easy transportation of bones back to homes or other places. Yeah, that sounds expedient, doesn't it? To prevent bodies from being stolen by thieves. I kinda, that's kind of a stretch for me. The belief that fire freed the soul from a wandering and searching, which is in error. Belief that fire purifies the departed person's soul, which is also in error. By the latter part of the 4th century, the burning of human corpses had become increasingly rare in the Roman Empire, likely the consistent Christian rejection of cremation long before Christianity became legal was having an empire-wide impact. Cremation begins reappearing in the West in about 1855, when an international congress of medical experts met in Florence in 1869 contending that the earth burial was unhygienic. Can you imagine that? Cremation appealed not only to the atheists and the free thinkers, but it was a commonly requested, usually an act of rebellion by the spiritualists, the theophysists, Unitarians and Universalists, anti-clerics and anti-church people. In 1875, the cremation societies in England and New York are formed. So it's been around for a while, 1875. Uh, the cremation rates in the United States have increased dramatically over the last several decades, from 0.003% in 1900, now up, come up to 2010, it's up to 40%. 40% from 0.003%. I hear a lot about that, about people saying, well, I just want to be cremated. And uh, it, it, it flies right in the face of the Orthodox tradition and even the Jewish tradition of burial. Now, what is cremation? Now, we all have an idea what it is, but let me give you some numbers here. 
Cremation is not a completely accurate term for burning of a departed person. 1400 to 1800 degrees, that's the environment that the body is placed in. Human bones do not burn because they contain about 60% inorganic, non-combustible matter. Thus, the unburned bone portions are pulverized in today's crematorium by a grinding process that reduces them to small granules resembling dried fertilizer pellets, the latter comprising at least half of the total remains. Sometimes a white-colored substance is added to make the ashes look more attractive. As a result of a package leakage, UPS and FedEx refuse to transport ashes of cremated bodies. Isn't that, isn't that interesting, Chad? They refused because of that problem. Even going through TSA in, in the airport, they, smugglers have been doing that. They've been putting st contraband in the cream, uh, in these jars, and now they've got to pop them open and go in there. And imagine what the person's thinking about. That was their loved one in, you know, reduced to, to, to dust and ashes, you know. And now they're rifling through the, 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 the contents to see if there's any contraband in there. Thank you very much, criminals. It takes about two to two and a half hours for a body to uh, be uh, you know, converted into ash. During incineration, the body is exposed to a column of flame produced by a furnace fueled by natural gas, oils, or even propane. So that's, that flies right in the face of ecology, doesn't it, Chad? Because now you're using fossil fuels, and they say it's, it's more ecological to do it that way. Well, like, it, let me tell you something. Before they even put the body into, the, into that crematorium, they, uh, they have to check for pacemakers and uh, you know, remove them because they may explode and damage the equipment inside the, crema uh, the crematoria, or they may even hurt the staff. They have filters, scrubbers, over the top of the exhaust pipes used to purify, try to purify the exhaust as it goes into the atmosphere. Think about that. Just think about all the fuel they burn uh, to cremate a body, and they reduce it down to this little urn. Uh, have you ever heard of dust to dust, ashes to ashes? But that's incorrect. It's dust to dust is correct. But that's a natural process that God in his creation has, has put forth, telling Adam and Eve, you're going back into the dust from whence you came. Now, let's talk, I want to talk about uh, ancient Judaism related to cremation. The Hebrews and Israelites in the Old Testament era lived and were surrounded by pagan societies. Canaanites, Amorites, Edomites, Hittites, Philistines, and the list goes on. Okay, though the prophets, God frequently warned the Israelites not to adopt pagan values. That's why they were a unique people separated. Not to adopt the pagan values, beliefs, or practices of those societies such as worshiping pagan polytheistic gods, marrying pagan wives, engaging in homosexual practices, eating unclean food, sacrificing infants, and making graven images of pagan idols. So there's kind of a list of what God did not want his people, Israel, to do. And it seemed like every time they did that, what happened? Captivity. They went into Babylon. I mean, God turned basically turned his back on, on his, his chosen people, and they went into, into uh, slavery or into bondage until they repented and woke up. In the Old Testament, earth burial was the norm for treating departed persons. Cremation was only used as punishment and humiliation for those who engaged in grievous and sinful acts. That reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened? to that homosexual city. Fire rained down from heaven, and they, only the righteous left that town before the judgment fell upon Sodom and Gomorrah.
You remember that, don't you, Chad, in Scripture? I do. About the fire coming down. And, uh, and it was more than just homosexuality. It was pride in one heart. Uh, they were worshiping or uh, sacrificing their children to yes. false gods. Yep. There was all sorts of stuff going on. There was homeless people outside the gates that weren't being attended to at all. They were being just kicked on, spit on, and get out of here. Right. Almost like today here in America. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> you, you just brought something just forward, eh, Chad. It's just like today. Pretty bad. Okay, it's just like today. It, I, I think it's just amazing uh, of the parallel you just created there from then and now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what What did the Lord tell us to do? One of the royal commandments is love one another and love your neighbor and, uh, you know, uh, that's that's the royal decree from Christ himself, is to love one another, love your neighbor. You know, by loving one another, you will show forth that you are truly disciples of Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I, I read today that, that Boris and Gleb are uh, big saints in the church. Uh, they're the passion bearers. And they had an evil brother that was so wicked that they, you know, instead of them fighting against his brother, their brother, uh, they actually were act like Christ. They were humble and meek, and because of that, they were destroyed by their evil brother. And now they they are uh, there's miracles that come from their their graves. Boris and Gleb. It's a, a quite amazing story of of those two saints, and they're called the Passion Bearers because they did not return evil for evil. They just took it like Jesus on the cross. He just took it. Quite amazing story. Uh, the Lord says to the prophet Amos, uh, for the th- for three sins of Moab, even for for even for four, I will not turn my back my wrath because he burned as if to lime. The bones of the Edom's king, Edom's king, this is argued as a clear denunciation of cremation. The Israelites treated the body of a dead person with great respect by closing the eyes washing the body, draping a napkin over the dead person's face, and anointing it with aromatic spices, and wrapping it in with linen. Now, when I say that, that should bring or trigger a story in your mind of the gospel when Jesus Christ was removed from the cross. What happened? They brought him down, then they wrap him in linen, and they placed him in the grave. They didn't burn him. They didn't cremate him. And they did everything I just, the list I just read off, I'll read it again, with great respect by closing the eyes, washing the body, draping a napkin over the dead person's face. Remember that when they went in, burst into the tomb, and the, all that was left was the burial clothes. And there was a, the body wrap was here, and then the face napkin was over there. So it, sh- it shows you that Jesus was actually interred per Jewish law. And what did the myrrh-bearing women were doing Sunday morning when they were coming to finish the burial process and anoint with aromatic spices? See, so you see that if we're Christians, why don't we emulate our Lord? Why don't we do exactly? It's like when it comes down to the to the Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ. Why don't we do it exactly the way the Lord said to do it in the upper room? Now that's a that's a story. That's another uh, show topic I have talked about many times. All you got to do is go to ogladsomelight.org and go to iHeart Link or even the YouTube link. Now it's on my homepage, and you can watch videos or you can go to iHeart, and I have all my shows archived on the iHeart Radio link. I, I looked at some of the. Uh, a summary of the Jewish uh, funeral customs, which is amazingly because uh, the Orthodox do it per, pretty much the same way as the Orthodox Jews did back in the day. Even today, funerals should take place as soon as possible. We don't embalm, okay? We don't put that, we don't pump, have the, the, the mortician pump out the, our, the body fluids and pump in the formaldehyde. That doesn't happen. It's natural. In fact, well, well what about uh, the stink and all that stuff? Well, uh, here's what happens. Remember, the person is in a pine box. 
a plain pine box. You ever see the, you know what a casket is? That's four-sided. It's got handles all, you know, and it's all, it's extravagant stuff. And well, uh, Orthodox Christians and Jews, they go into a plain pine box. You, you've seen the, ta- like the old the cowboys. Cas- hmm? Like the old cowboys. Exactly, because they go the headboard and it comes out like this and it comes in narrow to the feet. That's just that's what a that's well, a was coffin. That just in case you had some bigger boys. Well, I mean, no, that, ladies. that was because of the arms were folded or full so forth. So they made that yeah, they made like a this. triangle like that, you know. So it was a six sided box, not a four sided box. It was hmm. made out of this pine that would easily consume in the earth. Does not the Lord say dust to dust? And you're going to go back into the earth. So this was a process that that God had already created. Now man tries to supersede that with you know cremation or uh, go to a funeral oh my gosh the expense of, of getting a funeral today it's like seven thousand to ten thousand dollars yes it's it like is that. it's very expensive you know and it, it's a hardship on the family and that's even though if you have burial insurance you know and i'm looking at some coffins online right now for like seven thousand eight thousand two thousand dollars now there's a difference. Casket is one thing, coffin's another. Oh, is it? Coffin means a simple should mean in there a simple plain pine box. And casket's more of a nice ride. Right. Right. <laughs> to exactly. The underworld. Uh, and no autopsies, and unless the state laws require it. Uh, you know, if it's a mysterious death, then you're going to have an autopsy. Mm-hmm. But normally, no autopsies. Yeah. Cremation is not allowed. I'm reading from a Jewish list now. This is because traditional Jews are prohibited to desecrate the body by artificial means. Okay, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And it, this thing runs parallel with the Orthodox burial. Uh, burial is a plain wooden uh, coffin with no metal. And, and I remember I said pegs and, and so all that stuff. These are being made today by our Orthodox brethren. They have actual shops throughout the United States and probably Europe where you can go online and find a plain coffin, pine box. And they say, what about when you, because you know, when a person dies, there's a uh, there's a Trasagian service that the priest would read over the body at, at, at the point of death. And then when the body is brought into the temple, the church for burial, uh, he, it's like, He's placed in, he or she is placed in just like the icons in the church, okay? Even though he's laying horizontal, that person was baptized, chrismated, and received the body and blood of Christ, and now is in the, is, is the we call it the last kiss, that the, the grieving family could come up and, and say goodbye to their loved one before the lid is closed. And they say, well, what about... Uh, uh, rotten and you know flesh rotting they can pack the sides with dry ice to keep the body from you know smelling bad and but remember this doesn't uh, this is not a three-day deal this happens very quickly this the 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 fat the, the the body is put into the ground as soon as possible so I kind of get you an idea what's going on in it and it's very simple uh, the Jew is bury them, bury their loved ones in a plain linen uh, garment, and there's nothing put into the ca- uh, the coffin, nothing except that person. Because you come into the world with nothing, and you go out of the world with nothing. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea uh, of the way it was in the Jewish times. You know, once the funeral is over, all attending uh, richly wash their hands and, and leave the cemetery. But it's interesting, when they come to the cemetery, they're reciting Psalm 91. So I, I challenge you all out there, go out there and read Psalm 91. If I have time today, I'll read a portion of it and give you an idea, because the Orthodox read that also, the same psalm. You know, condolences are made at the home of the mourners, and at the funeral, an article of clothing is torn by by the direct mourners this is you know uh, they they tear the, a, a piece of garment you know and, and flowers are not sent because it's simplicity it's tradition okay and so the, the there is a reason for this plain wooden casket and linen shroud first it demonstrates that everyone is equal in death isn't that amazing chad that you have uh, a rich man his his plot his burial plot is the same size as a poor man it's the same size uh, you know, even in a mausoleum, uh, they put a, a ma- and I don't know, even, I don't go with mausoleums, no, uh, or caskets and, and embalming and all that stuff. That, none of that stuff that's not natural, but being put into the ground. And because, you know, it, it, that's where you're going back. 
And that body is just a temporary vehicle that held the Holy Spirit, the soul of, of, of you, for a temporary period. But th does not our faith teach us that we will be raised and our soul will be united to a resurrection body? Is that not our future, being resurrected and united with a resurrection body that will never die and never stink? And, you know, and Jesus showed us that for 40 days when he walked around in resurrection power and he showed himself to the people and he even told Peter, you know, feed my sheep. And that was, that was they were having a beach breakfast, a fish fry, on the beach that, that morning when he told Peter, feed my sheep three times. So the, death is the equalizer. It is still a same, what is it, uh, six feet down, six feet long, and three feet wide or something like that is the size of a grave. So Orthodox Jews don't do the cremation need to do Orthodox Christians because you know what it smacks of? What happened in the Holocaust? What happened in Europe, in Poland, in Germany during World War II? What happened to the Jews? They were being rounded up by the Nazis and they were putting in the creator, uh, you know, these crematoriums. Along with the gypsies, homosexuals. All, anything that they found is a not... not Aryan nation if you're not with them. You're not, <laughs> yeah, you're out. You know, so that's a reminder uh, of, you know, it, it's a reminder of, of, of the Holocaust, the cremation, especially, you know, of course, you know, it wasn't only the Jews, it was other people too, like you said, you know, gypsies, uh, Christians, anybody who didn't kowtow down to Hitler's decrees, you ended up in a, uh, in prison, in a death camp. Now, I want to give you a little, little uh, Christian arguments against uh, cremation. First point, our Lord, God, and Savior Jesus Christ died on the cross and was buried. And it says it in the Nicene Creed, okay? We should imitate Jesus. Should not? Aren't we? What does the word Christian mean? Follower of Christ. Be Christ-like. Everyone will be... A, be bodily resurrected in the second coming. I'm talking about evil and good. We're all going to be raised. And then there's going to be that. The Remember I talked about the wheat and the tares and the sheep goat judgment? There's going to be a separation. And those are going to, uh, we're going to put the wheat in the barn and, and the chaff, we're going we're to burn it. And the tares, we're going to burn it. Cremation is a denial of the bodily resurrection. It's like uh, we're putting our fist up to God and say, "This resurrect that, you know. No, we know God is all-powerful. I, I think about St. Polycarp. Uh, he was one of our first uh, martyrs. He was an old man, and he wouldn't kowtow to the uh, politics of the day. He was arrested, and then he was burnt at the stake. Now, did he willingly... Uh, Go, uh, go there. Well, he went there. He knew that was his call, but they tied him to a stake and they burned him alive. And he was basically cremated. But then they, after that, they gathered up the remnant of Polycarp and they buried it. But the point was, he didn't say, well, I want to be cremated. I remember a movie called Scrooged with Bill Murray. You remember that one when he's meeting with the, uh, uh, the the ghost of the future, and he sees a casket going into a, into a fi into a crematorium, and he was crying out, "Don't burn me! Don't burn me!" And that was that was a good movie, you know. It's, it, and it, it it has a great ending, you know. Uh, he's finally spiritually wakened up, you know. He woke up. But it's like that. Don't burn me. Don't. I just that just sticks in my mind that that movie Scrooge with Bill Bill Murray. If you have a chance, check that out. They usually run it during Christmas time. Uh, the human body is a sacred sanctuary, even after physical death. We respect the human body because it was the vehicle that housed the Holy Spirit and the soul of man. Okay, and it also received the body and blood of Christ. That body is sanctified. Cremation with, uh, with God's blessing is never mentioned in the Old Testament. And we not, now here's here's what Paul says: We must not be conformed to this world. Romans twelve two, 
because especially as cremation becomes more common and more popular, and people are going to see that, oh, let's do that, it's cheaper, and uh, uh, we'll get a little box, and we'll set it on the, uh, we'll set it on the, on the fireplace mantle, and there's grandma or grandpa or whatever. You can't go to a cemetery. I mean, I know you can take the remains and, and uh, you know, put them in the ground in a little box and, and, and bury it. But the point is, you know, here we are. The cemetery is a place, it's consecrated ground for the survivors of the family to come and visit the graves and honor the loved ones. These visits reminded survivors of the brevity and the uncertainty of their own lives and our inevitable destination to leave this world and meet our Lord. So are we trying to fight against uh, the truth of the scriptures? Studies show that survivors of the departed who are cremated express less grieving and weeping at the time of the funeral. I, that, that's it. When, when I, I, my brother was cremated, just a little box on this table with pictures. This is, you know. When my mom passed away, there, there was, you know, there was an open casket to say farewell, buried in the church, had a church service. Just like, you know, uh, you were in the church, you baptized and chrismated and received Holy Communion, you become an active member in the church, and now at the very end, I mean, the prayers, the, hopefully I can get to the prayers here in a little, little bit and talk about it. I mean, even, I, I want to talk about the, the, the relics here, you know. The sanctity of, sanctity of the human body did not come to an end when the person died. They saw the human being as the crown of God's creation, for man was made in the image and likeness of God. You can see that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. The saints during their earthly lives were filled with the Holy Spirit, and when they fulfilled their course, the grace of the Holy Spirit does not depart from their souls or their bodies in the tombs. Okay, That's by St. John of Damascus. Cremation denies and deprives us of the sacred trans tradition and benefits of the presence of saintly, holy relics. And let me tell you, there's many saints that are miracle workers even in their graves. People are healed. You go to Greece and Ios Nectarios, there's this aroma coming out of, out, out of his tomb, the, this heavenly smell and People are they are healed, are being healed by by their faith, and this so I can just touch that, you know. So that denies it. I mean, some some saints when they're taken out of the ground, they haven't even corrupted. They still look as fresh as they were when they were placed in the ground, which is quite amazing. That's a miracle in that sense. Now Saint Paul emphasizes this. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. Interesting scripture, isn't it? For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. And he says later on, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own anymore. You see, you're not... Are you a purchase vessel by God's sacrifice? So if someone kills you, God will kill them? Well, it's... it's you because know, they're killing your holy temple. If, if someone murders you or kills you, well, then, you know, your life is abruptly ended. Now, now it becomes, it's all up to God what he's going to do with that person. Yeah. Because it's all about the mercy of God, and it's all about, okay, if, if someone kills you, then we have laws in our country that you know, that arrest people and put them in prison or, or give them the death penalty and stuff like that. But if somebody kills you, you know, uh, first of all, God is omniscient, omnipresent, and all-knowing. And if he allows that... It's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. Hopefully you're prepared right, if that right. happens to you. <laughs> right. But as far as the perpetrator that did that act, okay, it's all about the mercy of God. And you know, it's like I was talking about Boris and Gleb. Their brother killed them. Uh -huh. Their evil brother killed them, mm -hmm. and they didn't fight against that. You know, normally we we go out in traffic on I ninety five, and if someone cuts us off, it's going to be a holy war. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and uh, I, even people die of road rage out mm -hmm. there because of that. Well, look at Boris and Gleb. They they, they gave it all up, and they became uh, uh, martyrs and saints in the church. 
So they did. They could have intervened and protected their own flesh, but that wasn't the plan of God for their life. So, even though we may not have attained a level of saintliness like some other of our spiritual predecessors, nevertheless, God's Holy Spirit lives and dwells within us. Isn't that what happens when we come, uh, you know, in the church? You're baptized, you're chrismated, and you receive the holy sacraments, the body and blood of Christ. And now you become a full-fledged member of the church of God. So let me go on here. The only fire, and here's what, let's talk about the real fire. The only fire we should submit, submit ourselves to is a fire of God's love and holy presence. Think about that. St. Paul also says, each man's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only through fire. And we have an icon in the church called the Last Judgment, and it shows that Jesus Christ sitting on the throne judgment seat, and there's fire coming out of the throne, and, it's, and it comes down as a form of like an S, and it goes into hell. But that fire is God's love all the way into hell. And it's the people that who make a choice to you know, separate themselves from a holy God, they choose that. God don't send them there. They choose that. But it's the same river, if you could call it, the same river of love. If you love God, when you see that fire, you'll feel love. If you hate God and you see and if you see that fire, you're going to feel hate because it's coming right back on you like a mirror. See, the Orthodox faith affirms the fu fundamental goodness of creation. It understands the body to be an in integral part of the human person and the temple of the Holy Spirit and expects the resurrection of the dead. We sing that all the time in our divine liturgies. The church considers cremation to be the deliberate desecration and destruction of what God has made and, or, or, and is ordained for us. The church instead insists the body be buried so that the natural physical process of decomposition may take place. I mean, I've talked about people who says, well, I don't want the worms to eat me. <laughs> this is part of the process. You're not going to care because you're gone. What made you you is gone out of that temple, that body, but you don't desecrate the, the, the vehicle that God has placed your soul into. The church does not grant funerals either in the sanctuary or at funeral homes or at any other place to persons who have chosen to be cremated. And that's a, that's a choice, you know. That's a choice. So uh, let's say you have a person that passes away and they're an Orthodox. You can talk to the funeral man director and say, look, I want a green burial or a Jewish type burial. And that's, that, that's right on because the, the, the funeral director knows exactly what a Jewish burial comprises of, okay? And uh, the, as soon as a person dies, the priest is called. And he comes to the house, and, and he reads the Trisigan prayers over, that, over the dead person, okay? And it's interesting. In some traditions, there's a burial shroud. Now, uh, some of them have a cloth that has the Trisigan hymn placed over their eyes. And so it's kind of like kind of neat because the tradition is when, when the Lord says, come up here, their eyes pop open. The first thing they see is, holy God, holy mighty, holy and immortal have mercy on us and i think that's really cool to be able to uh you know to to have that kind of tradition in the church to have that cover your eyes so the first thing you see when you open your eyes is the lord you know the lord so let me uh in in our funeral service in the orthodox church i want to read real quick the um the the scriptures that are that are read at a funeral let me read this now remember i talked about Psalm 91, it, it talks about being under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, uh, thou art my hope and my stronghold, and my God in him will I trust. For I will deliver thee from the snare of the hunter, from the noisome pestilence. He, will, he shall defend thee under his wings, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers, his faithfulness and truth shall be the shield and a buckler. I'm just high pointing uh, Psalm 91 here. 
In the Orthodox Church, is Psalm 90. You say, well, why is there two different psalms? Why is it 91 versus 90? Well, it depends. The Septuagint in Hebrew, or you're getting it from the Greek. Okay, that's why the difference between psalm numbers. So go check that out on the Internet. I, I don't want to spend time on that. But uh, let me read the actual uh, two scriptures that are, that are read uh, to, uh, in, during the funeral service. And one of them is the epistle is from the uh, Holy Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, I would not have you be ignorant concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not. So there you go. There's our comfort. Even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's our faith. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, and with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. Now that should comfort that the family when they come to the funeral service and hear these words that are coming from, from St. Paul in, in, the, in the book of Thessalonians. Now what about the gospel? It comes out of John, St. John. The Lord said to the Jews which came unto him, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and, that, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is a son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. And they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of the damnation. I can of, I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father that has sent me. And that, those are the two powerful scriptures that come uh, out of the funeral ser Orthodox funeral service. That it all boils down to resurrection. That we have a temporary body, and we are given a time to, of, of theosis. Now, the theosis is that process that God uses in us to make us more like his son, Jesus. And so while we have time on this earth, that we should be involved in that process of theosis, of letting God be God in our lives. Because what is the body? You know, it's just, I could say it's a vehicle. Treat it with respect and honor because it, is, it was the temple of the Holy Spirit, it did take of the body and blood of Christ. And so let's do a plain, simple, simple green burial or a, a Jewish type burial and let that person go back naturally into the ground from which he came. We have talk about dust to dust in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. So let us emulate or let us, let us agree with the scriptures and not fight the scriptures and say, well, I'm going to be cremated. And, and now you're going to find yourself in, you know, you're going to deprive yourself of all the blessings, you know, uh, of being uh, in a church burial and being in a cemetery where the, where the monks can come and pray for you and pray. You say, well, you won't pray for the dead. Excuse me. We remember in fact, when a person dies, we always say, memory be eternal. And we're telling God, don't forget about our loved ones. And so you'll hear, an or at a, at a, at a, they call it a panahita. In the Greek, it's imenosamen. But we would hear the words, memory eternal, and that that person's memory would be eternal in the presence of God the Father. So I, I hope that this, this 
sub subject today, this topic on cremation versus burial, uh, made sense to you, and that that uh, pass this message on to your family. Now let them let them hear what I had to say today about this. You know, choose the the act, the burial in a green burial. Okay, choose not the cremation. Okay, don't be don't be confounded by the worldly wisdom. Let us let us do it the way God has prescribed us to do this. Okay, and, and let us go, let the body go naturally back into the earth from whence it came. And it's not ecologically foul. It's it's a process that God has created. Okay, it's so don't fight God on this thing. Okay, so we, we all need to pray about it. You know, I don't have to pray about it because I already know that my burial is going to be a simplistic pine box coffin burial that I'll go back into the ground from whence I came. And so, amen on that, everybody out there? <laughs> amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening to the Ogladsome Light Podcast. We hope this program has encouraged you to fight the good fight of faith and walk in the accordance with the commandments of our Lord. May God bless you on your journey to salvation.